Do you know more about low back pain than a medical student? You actually might. So researchers quizzed medical students versus the general public on seven myths about low back pain. So can you beat the medical students? So on average, the public only got three out of seven questions correct, but even the medical students only got four out of seven questions correct. That's not very good. So let's see if you can do better. And then after the quiz, we'll go through the research surrounding each question and and bust some of these harmful myths. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis, and I empower people with chronic low back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life they love using an integrated approach to rehab. All right, let's get started. And by the way, these are all true or false answers. Write your answers down. Uh, in fact, write them in the comments section. I'd love to see your answers. Question number one, true or false? If you have a slipped disc or a, a bulged or herniated or ruptured disc, then you do have to have surgery. Question number two, true or false, x-rays, CT scans, and advanced imaging like MRI can always identify the cause of your pain. Question number three, true or false, if your back hurts, then you should definitely take it easy and rest until the pain goes away. Question number four, true or false, most back pain is caused by injuries or heavy lifting. Question number five, true or false, back pain is usually disabling. And question number six, true or false, everybody with back pain should get an x-ray of their spine. And finally, question number seven, true or false, bed rest is the main part of treatment for back pain. So pause the video, go back, answer the questions first, make sure you have your answers in your mind, put them in the comments, and let's see the results. All right, the correct answer for every single question is false. None of these things are true. All right, so if you did better than a three out of seven, then you beat the general public. And if you did better than four out of seven, you beat the medical students. And if you missed question number four, by the way, you've got a lot of company because that was the most commonly missed question. Uh, that was the one about heavy lifting. Now, again, I would love to see your scores in the comments section. So just drop your scores in the comments. Let's see how you did. So why did they do this study? Why do we care about these low back pain myth? We care because the brain is so powerful. How you think about pain influences how likely you are to recover. Fear, feeling fragile, a lack of control, and avoiding movement make back pain worse. But feeling resilient, being optimistic, and staying active can all improve back pain. Now these seven myths are terrible because they reinforce fear mongering and depending on the myth, they can push you towards useless and even harmful treatment. So let's talk about why all these myths are absolutely false so that you can recover the right way. Myth number one, a slipped disc requires surgery. This is completely false. Disc herniations are actually a pretty normal part of being a human being. This study found that 30% of pain-free 20-year-olds had disc bulges, and this percentage increased to 84% of pain-free 80-year-olds. So a bulge is just like a small herniation, but even big disc injuries are super common in people who have zero pain. We see them in 29% of pain-free 20-year-olds and 43% of pain-free 80-year-olds. And even when disc herniations do hurt, surgery is only required if the patient has red flag symptoms. These include saddle anesthesia, loss of bowel or bladder control, rapidly progressing motor weakness or muscle atrophy. So if you don't have red flag symptoms, then you really don't need surgery and you can do exercise instead. This study compared conservative management, which is like exercise, to uh, spinal surgery. Now we did find that the surgical group recovered a little bit faster, but by the time a year rolled around, they had the same results. So if you can just be patient, then you really don't need the surgery. Now myths number two and six said kind of the same thing, that imaging like MRI and X-ray can identify the cause of your pain, and if you have pain, you should definitely get imaging. And, and this is absolutely false. Imaging is actually really bad at identifying the source of back pain and sciatica, right? Because even if you took an MRI of 3,000 random people with zero pain, even though you'd expect their spine to look really good since they have no pain, you'd actually find that most of them have disc herniations, disc degeneration, and many other things that don't matter. In fact, getting a picture of your spine might actually be one of the worst 
worst things that you could do for your back pain. This study showed that getting an early and unnecessary MRI makes you 12 times more likely to be pushed into a surgery that you do not need. And on top of that, even if you're not pushed into surgery, it still makes your recovery worse. Because getting an MRI just scares people. No matter who you are, you're going to find something on the MRI, even if that thing doesn't actually matter, right? And then it's gonna get in your head. So this study found that showing people their MRI results actually made people afraid to exercise, right? And then they had no social life and they were more anxious around their pain. This is a big deal. Right, this study showed that fear of movement increased risk of developing chronic pain and disabling low back pain. Right, fear matters. Uh, here's a cool study comparing optimists and pessimists and testing their pain tolerance. And we literally found that being an optimistic person gave you better pain tolerance and decreased pain. And, and not only that, but simply telling the pessimists to think positive thoughts, uh, their pain literally went down by just thinking positive thoughts. So it should be obvious that getting an MRI is a terrible idea for most people. However, in rare cases, an MRI can be a lifesaver, right? We do sometimes need imaging to find serious conditions like tumors, fractures, aneurysms, or infections. But these things are super rare and they usually present with red flag symptoms. Things like fever, sweats, chills, accidental weight loss, extreme physical trauma, or a history of cancer. So if you don't have these red flags, then imaging is probably gonna do more harm than good. Now, myths number three and seven basically said that if you have back pain, you should rest, take it easy, don't do exercise, stay in bed. And again, this is absolutely false. It's, it's terrible advice, right? Movement is medicine, motion is lotion. So if you have back pain or sciatica, you should be as as active as you possibly can without totally pissing it off. I mean, bed rest has not been a recommended treatment for back pain since the 1970s. Right, this systematic review showed that bed rest is less effective than advice to remain active. And on top of not being helpful for back pain, it's very disruptive to your life. Right, This controlled trial found that people given bed rest for back pain were slower to make a recovery, they had worse pain, worse mobility, more disability, and they took more days off of work compared to people who did exercise. Ultimately, it all comes down to the rule of twos. If you do too much too fast after doing too little for too long, you're going to get hurt. But the part in there that most people miss is that doing too little for too long makes your body weak, you get atrophied, and then you get injured doing basic things because your body's not strong enough to handle even simple things. So you need to get strong, but you need to do it slowly. For example, at the start, you can just modify your current activities. Like, Instead of walking three miles, just walk one mile. Or instead of lifting 100 pounds, just lift, I don't know, like 30 pounds. Ultimately, you just calm things down and then slowly build things back up. Please do not just lay around all day. It is one of the worst things you can possibly do. Now, myth number four is that most back pain is caused by an injury or heavy lifting. And once again, this is completely false. The reality is back pain is complex and we can rarely attribute back pain to one single cause, right? Injury or heavy lifting may play a role in acute pain, but chronic pain almost never is caused by an injury. For example, if you've had back pain for years, then depression or being sedentary are much more likely to be contributing factors than an injury or heavy lifting. And then one of the biggest factors is actually genetics. Like this study looked at twin you know, siblings and they looked at their lives to determine if certain lifestyle factors would lead to more or less spinal degeneration. And they expected that wear and tear from heavy lifting and activity would make Make a difference, but it didn't. Turns out genetics just leads to some people getting arthritic changes. Honestly, it's kind of like wrinkles or freckles. Not only that, but that study actually found that loading the spine actually might help to delay degeneration. So this is really interesting because that means that arthritis
arthritis is not a wear and tear or overuse condition. It's actually an underuse condition. And that's what we see in this study that looked at the activity levels of people over 14 years. And they found that people who were less active had more degeneration. So the real cause of pain is definitely complex. There are multiple factors. It's kind of like if you fill a blender with, you know, water and berries and maybe peanut butter and so on. And if you fill it up too high and it overflows, you're going to have a mess on your hands, but it doesn't matter what's in the blender. If it overflows, you get pain, right? With pain, it's the exact same thing. It's the combination of physical activity, mental and emotional stress, poor sleep, crappy food, genetics, and so many other factors. So we can't possibly just blame one thing. We need to look at the entire picture. And then myth number five was that back pain is usually disabling. And again, this is false. Now, of course, there are serious causes of back pain, like an aneurysm, fracture, cancer, cauda equina syndrome, or an infection. And yeah, these are terrible. But the vast majority of low back pain cases are not dangerous. And most back pain substantially improves in about six weeks. Now, unfortunately, after about three months, improvement does tend to slow down. So if all you get is like the occasional flare up, then you got nothing to worry about. Just keep living your life and it's going to go away eventually. But unfortunately, that's not very comforting to those of you who have chronic low back pain for months and months and maybe even years. So if you're struggling with chronic low back pain, you really need more of a comprehensive plan. And fortunately, I made a completely free masterclass teaching you all about it. And the link is in the description. Now, today we learned about seven low back pain myths. We reviewed tons of research showing that number one, you do not need to get a surgery just because you have a disc herniation. Number two, x-rays and MRIs cannot tell you the cause of your pain in most cases. Number three, bed rest is one of the worst things that you can do for back pain. Number four, most back pain is not caused by injuries or heavy lifting. Number five, back pain is usually not disabling. Number six, we should not be taking x-rays of every single person with pain. And number seven, that bed rest makes things worse exercise is best. So in this video, we corrected some really dangerous myths that are keeping you stuck in pain. But now one of the biggest questions that I get at this point is, okay, well, if a disc herniation is not the single cause of my pain, then what is causing my pain? Hey, great question, right? And I made a video teaching you exactly what the real root cause of chronic low back pain and sciatica is. So click the video appearing on your screen right now, and I'll see you there.